Being a marketer of one can be a pretty lonely place at a company. And uh, that's probably why anytime True Marketing creates a blog post or has an interview on this podcast with a solo marketer, uh, they tend to be quite popular. So I've decided to continue that trend with today's guest. She works for an electronics company that makes front end displays uh, that design engineers can put into products and describes what it's like, you know, a day in the life of a marketing department department of one, how she survives and thrives and provides her advice on survival skills for those of you out there in similar shoes. Let's do this. Welcome to Content Marketing Engineered, your source for building trust and generating demand with technical content. Here is your host, Wendy Covey. Hi, and welcome to Content Marketing Engineered. On each episode, I'll break down an industry trend, challenge, or best practice in reaching technical audiences. You'll meet colleagues, friends, and clients of mine who will stop by to share their stories. And I hope that you leave each episode feeling inspired and ready to take action. Before we jump in, I'd like to give a brief shout out to my agency, True Marketing. True is a full service agency located in beautiful Austin, Texas, serving highly technical companies. For more information, visit truemarketing.com. And now on with our podcast. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Content Marketing Engineered. I'm here today with Diana Van Dusen, and she's the marketing manager at Azumo. Welcome to the show, Diana. Thank you. Thank you for having me and bringing me on. You bet. We're going to have a good talk today. I want to get in your shoes, so to speak, although my shoe size is probably bigger than your size, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, it, it literally, not figuratively, and uh, just learn about a day in the life of your world and hear a little bit about your career progression and how you got to be where you are. So I think you know, this will be just a great discussion for people who are looking to progress their careers in marketing and just want to hear what it's like both working at a software company and a hardware company because you've done a little bit of both, right? Yes, uh, they're they're two different animals for sure. Um, and you know, working alongside a software engineer is a lot different than working alongside an electrical engineer or a mechanical engineer for that matter. Um, so um, at Azumo, I have couple interns that started recently, but I've been a marketing team of one. Um, so that's been a, a different challenge um, with limited resources, whereas previous in software, there was a broader team. Um, so if I needed something created, I walked over to someone's desk and said, hey, can you help me work on this? Um, whereas now it's, I have to work on this. Um, so uh, there's been some resources here and there, you know, many of us that are marketing team of ones, which as a technical marketer, most companies, people listening are probably all, many of them are teams of one. Um, you know, we may have some third party resources that we can utilize, but it um, makes it a little more challenging. Which do you like better? You know, there's pro, definitely pros and cons to both. Um, I like the autonomy of being, not necessarily, you know, if I was a team of even or four or five, but being in a smaller company versus a larger company, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily in terms of people, but, you know, more startup versus uh, a large corporate enterprise. There's, uh, the enterprise might have more resources, but there's also a lot more that goes into getting resources. When you're a smaller team, especially, you know, reporting to the CEO, if there's something I want to do that costs budget, I can send him a text message or walk into his office and say, hey, I want to do this. What do you think? Um, you know, versus having many uh, steps and red tape in a corporate, a larger enterprise environment. Yeah, I bet too, having that direct line means that you're more connected to the business and understand in more detail where the business is headed and why, because you have that direct relationship. Yeah, I think also working for a company where, where there's a lot of transparency, um, which some larger enterprise organizations may not have, um, kind of gives that, that transparency to the whole company, not just me having that direct CEO line. Um, I've been fortunate in my career. My previous role was also soft, was in software. 
and I reported to the CEO. And even before that, working for a larger enterprise organization, um, I happened to be in the same, or I was at our headquarters and where I sat wasn't too far from where the CEO sat. And I started with him um, in a startup and then we got you know, acquired by a larger company. So I got to know him more as a person. So it was you know, very comfortable to ask some questions or for, you know, grabbing a cup of coffee in the kitchen to say, hi, how you doing? Um, be like, oh, that was really interesting last month about this or that and get some further insights. So I've been fortunate in that, in that aspect. Nice. Now at Azumo, you've seen a lot of pretty unique things. So one is you're working with investors and not everybody has that. And another one is you saw the company through a rebrand and renaming. So tell me a little bit about how that progressed and what your role was. Sure. So renaming, rebranding, I, I dubbed it like our re-everything project because we were redoing everything. Um not just refreshing the logo and updating branding, but changing the name. Um, I think there were some corporate decisions of going from like an LLC to a C-Corp. Um, so it made sense to kind of do them all at the same time. Um, luckily, I had one of our in investors has some marketing resources, um, mainly this one woman who was, you know, an extension of the team that had gone through this with other companies. So her guidance was unparalleled. Um, I tell her that all the time. If, it, if she didn't help us with that, I definitely would have pulled my hair out a little bit. Um, so I don't know if that helped to answer your question, but it was, it wasn't as, it's a big undertaking, but when everything's broken down into smaller steps of, okay, we're, we're here, we need to be there. And I like to backtrack from where I am, from where I want to be to where I am. That tends to make things a little bit, um, more digestible. I gotcha. So thinking about this dynamic, you have company leadership that you work with. You have um, some outside investors that obviously are keen, keenly interested enough so that they lent you some resources. So I find that interesting. <laughs> so how do you ensure you have their buy-in on your marketing plans? Or do you have a certain marketing dashboard that you're presenting back? Or what, what's your accountability look like? Um, so, you know, I think that our, our investment team definitely sees value in marketing. Um, many of them have had marketing backgrounds or business backgrounds. It's more the engineer that doesn't always see the value in marketing, as I'm sure you're <laughs> familiar with. Um, so even when I started, just hearing from um, my boss that the other co-founders of the company um, heard more third party testimonials. So, you know, other people in the industry that were like, hey, I saw this blog piece. Hey, I saw this ad out. Um, I got this email and this was really interesting. Telling him that really kind of got his tie in. Um, so, being small and, and having historically haven't had a large marketing budget, I don't have a big dashboard to say, we spent this much in ads and this was the ROI on it. And being in, you know, a technical company, as I'm sure you're familiar with, the sales cycle isn't a six to eight week SAS uh, lead time. If anything, six to eight weeks is long for, for software. Um, you know, our sales cycle could be 12 to 18 months, sometimes 24, 36 months. Yeah. So um, attribution is very difficult with that long sales cycle, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so hearing though, hearing that from my boss that he's like, yeah, so-and-so told me they, they saw these things and they're really starting to see the value of it. Yeah. Um, so I think just having an increase, um, even just having more blog posts and content and posting on social, um, especially on LinkedIn and we use Twitter a lot too, um, just being out there in the world people start noticing and start getting feedback back to the investors and to C-suite. Um, and that tends to funnel down a little bit because they also know to your point, the sales cycle is so long, it's hard to say um, these marketing activities really helped move the needle. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, what I find interesting too, is, is sometimes leadership is skeptical of the data being served up by marketing anyway. And so this anecdotal evidence of, I see this activity, people are saying positive things sometimes speaks more volumes than, you know, this dashboard that they may not be bought into. Um, so that's Absolutely. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. So when you first started at Azumo, how did you ramp up? How did you learn about the, the products and your target, target personas? What, what steps did you go through to do that? Um, there was some, some things already in the works when I had started that I just read as much as I could. Um, I actually went to some of the engineers and asked them questions. Um, try to also kind of learn what their their language is because being a marketer and you know I have a degree in sociology and have worked in marketing for so long that engineering is is you know very foreign to me um so asking them as many questions as I can we had an application engineer that did a lot of product training with me um and our sales director had been with the company for probably I don't know maybe 10 15 years now um, so hearing from them was really helpful. Um, some of our products, I actually went to the area of um, where all the builds were happening and actually got to build a few things. Um, I'm like, I might break it, but at least I can see what it's like. I didn't break anything. Um, so that's, that's a plus. Um, okay. But just kind of getting my hands in and being like, oh, we built this. Let me build, you know, we're a reflective display. Let me build one. I want to see what it's like. Um, so having a hand in that has been really helpful. Um, a little part of my role is it falls in some um, production and operational activities. So even as, as little as I had in that, um, just having that exposure. Um, a few things when my boss would be on pitch calls or he would get, um, you know, a and a journalist that wanted to interview him for an article, I listened in, or even sales presentations, I listened in as much as I could. Um, and then, I mean, Google, like I Googled like different, you know, marketing for engineers. Um, I mean, and that's actually how I found out about Tree was I literally Googled marketing to engineers and True's website popped up and um, all of your content was, was invaluable. Yes, good. <laughs> it was. I'm not, and she didn't pay me to say that. It's absolutely <laughs> true. That's how I met Wendy in the first place. Um, was there's for technical marketers, there's not a lot of resources out yeah. there. Yeah. And I, it, it, you're leading into my next question so well. I was going to say is, a, so as a marketing department of one, how do you keep up with the latest trends and just stay on top of your marketing education so that you can put together a cohesive marketing strategy? I'm sure it's not easy, you know, because you don't have no. peers <laughs> to brainstorm with and bounce ideas off of. Um, you know, I joined different like marketing groups on LinkedIn. There's even some on Facebook. Um, I have some other friends that work in marketing and some of them work for large agencies and are B2C marketers, but still, you know, we'll ask them questions. Um, I actually took a marketing certificate program. So having that, my degree is not in marketing, um, wanted to learn just a little bit more, um, on that and there was a lot of it was in though it was a b2b class there was a lot of b2c strategies that they brought in that i found interesting um and then just following blogs of different content marketers you know i get true's emails often um there's a few others in the technical marketing space that i follow um and then just you know looking on linkedin or posting like hey i'm trying to do this like what are your thoughts and and kind of using that those groups as like, just as a, a, a thought leader, um, yeah. when I don't have, you know, a whole team to sit and brainstorm with. Great. I can tell you're a very resourceful person. You <laughs> get out there, you figure out, you find it. That's God awesome. Bless Google. I Google a lot, <laughs> That's, you know, and then that leads down the rabbit hole to, uh, you know, different articles and different content pieces that I can, can utilize. Yeah. So you mentioned interns earlier. So you have two interns right now. Uh, is this something you've done often? Haven't have interns coming in and working with you, or is that more of a summer thing? What does it look it, like? 
it's a summer thing. Um, okay. We have these two this summer, um, and they're probably 70, 80% marketing, um, 20, you know, 30% sales. Not so much in, in cold calling business development sales, but really in the sales enablement, um, which is huge as a marketer. I'm not just a digital marketer. I'm not just a content marketer. I wear all the hats. Um, in sales enablement in a large organization, they might have someone on the marketing team that only creates content and, and does sales enablement. Um, and that's where, you know, one aspect is, is one person. I, I, there's only so many hours in a day and I'm only one person, so I can only do so much. Um, so having them be able to work on some more content and even pitch decks and things for sales um, has been really helpful. Good. Um, but when, and then we also had another um, intern last summer also. So it's been just, just a summer, but it's been great having people come in that have strengths where I have weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, and I love being creative, but I'm not a graphic designer. So having someone that has a lot more of a graphic design eye and then another intern that a little stronger in writing than I am, um, has been really helpful. Oh, that's a nice formula. Yeah. yeah that's how that great. was my design. <laughs> like, but, don't go back to school in the fall. I need you to stay on. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah. But well, the degree is important, more important to, yeah. to finish the degree first. Yes. For sure. Said well. Yeah. Uh, so what, what parting advice do you have for others out there that are either just starting off in their marketing careers, or maybe they're the one person marketing marketing department, just like you. you have a few nuggets of advice that you've learned over your career? Um, for someone new that's starting, especially if they're not exactly sure what aspect of marketing they want to go into, I think that's where like some informational interviews might be really helpful. Um, I have a friend who's pivoting from teaching and wants to get into marketing, and she's been finding people on LinkedIn that have different job titles and kind of asking them for a 10 minute conversation, um, you know, working in an organization that either has a large team where you can learn a little bit from each or even a small team where you're doing it all will kind of help guide you. And, um, you know, do I want to be more on the digital side? Do I want to create content? Do I like writing better? Um, but a mark coming into a mark as a marketing team of one, especially in a technical marketing role, um, just, looking online for as many resources to, to help you, um, blogs, finding webinars, um, finding those LinkedIn groups where there's others that are like you, have similar roles um, that maybe have been doing it longer that you can ask guidance and, and questions to. So. You said something earlier that, that really stuck with me. You said, I'm only one person. I only have so much time. <laughs> And so it seems to me like setting boundaries and, you know, pushing back on the organization at some times I'm sure is required so that it's not just becoming an 80 hour and a 90 hour job. And right. You know, and some weeks, control. right. Some weeks it might be, you know, we, if you're going to a big conference and there might be a lot of activities before the conference that you have to attend to, um, but it's not going to be like that every week. Um, so, I mean, I keep my calendar up to date if I have to do a pickup or a drop up for my daughter or, um, you know, if I tell someone like, I'll get to it at this time or one sales asks, can you have this done by Thursday? Like it, I always want to say yes to everything. So I've been learning the last several months of I can't by Thursday, but I can by this day. And if they're like, well, I need it by Thursday. You know, if someone asked me for something by Thursday now, like, you know, I have a PTO day tomorrow. I, I, I can give you 10 minutes, you know, and sometimes yeah. just giving a little bit yeah. um, can, can buy your time. Yeah. Very good. But, yeah. Well, Diana, thank you so much for sharing <laughs> just, just what it's like being in your shoes. Like I said, and great advice for other marketers out there working at technical companies. It's often can be a struggle, uh, you know, managing expectations organizationally and ramping up. So I think you gave some great advice today. Really appreciate you Thank coming you. On. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining me today on Content Marketing Engineered. For show notes, including links to resources, visit truemarketing.com slash podcast. While there, you can subscribe to our blog and our newsletter and order a copy of my book, Content Marketing Engineered. Also, I would love your reviews on this podcast. So please, when you get a chance, 
Subscribe and leave me your review on your favorite podcast subscription platform. Thanks and have a great day.